Hi, I'm Aaron Gasser and I'm going to take you through the Inward Crescent Kick. This kick is mainly for hip flexibility, but if you are struggling with the turn kick, then the Inward Crescent Kick is an easier option for you. The easiest way to first do the Inward Crescent Kick is to go into your fighting stance and to form the kick off your rear leg. From there then, step one, we're going to turn our front foot to release our hip. We're going to lift our leg up 45 degrees on the outside. We're going to circle our leg inwards, hitting with the inner heel. From there then, we have the option of placing the leg down in front or recoiling the leg all the way back behind. Before we discuss the kick in more detail, here's the kick off the right and left leg from different angles. First pointer is to turn your front foot to release your hip. If you don't turn your front foot, then you're not able to pass your centre line, which means if you're aiming to get hip flexibility, you're not going to get that much because you're not going to be able to go all the way through. If you're hitting someone, it's going to dab them on the head rather than striking through the head. So we turn the front foot. Once we've done that then, we're able to let the momentum carry through the centre line, strike in, obviously we can come back. After we turn our front foot, we lift our leg up 45 degrees to make the inward crescent kick. So we've got a lot of circular momentum to create power in the technique, or range of hip flexibility. If I don't lift that knee up at 45, and I lift the knee up straight, when I kick, the kick isn't gonna have that much power if it's connected, but it's not gonna have the angle as well. We're aiming to the side of someone's head with the heel. So if we're lifting up straight, you know, we're not gonna be hitting to the side of the head, we're gonna be in front of them. Also, on the way up then, we've got a chance of scuffing the legs on the way up, or in the elbow joint and breaking our foot. To make sure we are doing both of those steps, we can use a chair. All we have to do is go into a fighting stance in the centre of the chair, turn your front foot out, lift the leg up at 45 degrees, circle over the chair, and come back. If we're doing that, we're getting a bigger range of hip flexibility, and we are also creating more power from the momentum. If we lift up straight now, we're going to hit the chair. Hit the chair, that's representing we're hitting the elbow or scuffing the person on the way up. So if we lift up 45, we don't scuff the person, we get a bigger range, we strike all the way through and over the chair. Also, the end aspect of going through, it shows you are going through enough. Because if I go through and drop down, I come back on the chair. So this shows now that the inward crescent kick strikes all the way through. When making the kick, keep your shoulders up and close to in line. This way, our toes stay pointed upwards and we make a nice inward crescent kick. If we dip our shoulders at any point, we end up changing the angle of the inward crescent kick and doing a different kick. Also, we end up a little bit off balance, so recovering the kick is a little bit more difficult. Your knee also controls the angle of your kick, so make sure you keep the knee pointed upwards so we end up with a correct inward crescent kick. If we point our knee anywhere else, again, we end up with a different kick. Power comes from hip rotation, so a big, quick motion will give you a stronger kick. To create maximum damage with the inward crescent kick, we want to be striking with the inner edge of your heel. This is very dense and strong, so when it connects, it's gonna really damage the opponent. Whereas if we go further up, we're hitting with this part here, it's more tissue and muscle. So if we're hitting something hard like bone, it's gonna cut through your muscle and damage your foot. If you go further up, obviously you've got your toes. These are very easy bones to break. So you wanna be striking with the inner edge of our heel. The main target areas are to the jaw or to the temple. In close combat situations, we can take the knee cap out or break the balance. When you have the inward crescent kick off your rear leg, you can attempt the kick off your lead leg. All we have to do is transfer the body weight onto our back leg, lift the front leg up, make the inward crescent kick, and place the leg back down. If we lean forward when we make the kick, we fall forward. If we lean back, we lose our balance and fall back. So make sure when you're transferring your body weight, transfer nice and balanced, make the inward crescent kick, then land the leg in front. The lead inward crescent kick is more difficult when striking high section, but will give you better hip flexibility and more of a challenge.
This concludes my tutorial on the Inward Crescent Kit, so check my channel for other tutorials and subscribe for future tutorials. Thank you.